It's hard to believe that a year has already gone by and E3 is always kind of exciting and scary at the same time because you kind of don't know what to expect sometimes. The time between E3 never feels like a year to me. It always feels like when you're in the moment, E3, the week of E3 seems to take a small eternity and an instant at the same time, but the time between always goes by quick. Before you know it, E3 is back again. This is the second year that E3 is back to the old E3, so it's going to be nice. Last year was a big success. It was like 41,000 attendees, so I'm very excited to see how they build that momentum. It's kind of you know, really nice seeing this kind of be, you know, the kind of shining city on a hill of the U.S. game industry, which it once was, because after two years of being, you know, nothing, it's really great seeing it back. So I'm excited to see it back in full, full force again. I think this E3 is going to be when Sony and Microsoft really set the tone for what they're trying to do with their motion controls for the rest of the year. I mean, the big question about Natal has always been, can they pull this off? Can this actually, you know, be, you know, can you actually play a game effectively without a controller? You know, I mean, you can play simple games like knocking balls, but is this going to translate to a shooter? Is there going to be some kind of, you know, user control and, and Natal? You know, that, that's kind of the big question that's going to come out of E3 right now. This year's really exciting with all the hardware announcements. Um, so you got the Vitality Sensor, which I'm kind of curious about. I don't know how that's going to work. Uh, you're going to have the 3DS, which I don't think anybody knows what to expect, but, you know, 3D, tiny DS, no new glasses. Could be cool. There's one big thing in E3 that you need to, to, to know about. Those are the games at the start of the show every year. Probably the game that I am most looking forward to right now is The Last Guardian. Last Guardian. Let's talk about that. Last Guardian? Need to play Last Guardian. It's uh, the big PlayStation 3 exclusive from, uh, from Team Eco. I love their last game, Shadow of the Colossus. We don't really know a whole lot about it yet. We've seen screens, we've seen trailers, but the game it looks really cool. It looks pretty similar to Shadow of the Colossus. Really want to see how uh, how sad that game is because there's only one way that game can end, and that's with the Griffin dying. That's just that's just it. I'm just really eager to see what they've got up their sleeve. I'm hopefully going to be able to you know play some Gears of War three. I'm really excited for Gears of War 3. I was a big fan of the first two. Unlike some people, I actually care about the story and I want to know what happens. So, um, you know, I wish there were more co-op shooters the, the way Gears is, so I'm really looking forward to that. As for other games I'm really excited about, Gears 3, of course. I can't wait for that. I'm a huge Gears of War fan. I've read the books, I've played the games, I know the, I know the universe pretty well, so I'm curious to see um, what's going to be happening. I'm curious like the, the mechanics of what you're going to be able to do in combat are really cool. You know, that's all fine, but I'm, I'm like curious how they're going to end this story. Supposedly this is the third game in a trilogy, so maybe this is the last chapter of the Gears of War series. I love the characters, I love the story so far. I'm curious to see how it's going to end up. My wants for E3, gotta play Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Totally have. <laughs> I'm really excited for Fable 3. I heard the dog comes back, and I was really attached to my dog, so at least I think the dog comes back, right? You know, Metroid, Other M, uh, I've been interested to see how that kind of progresses. Uh, you know, it's kind of sad that it's not, it's been delayed a little bit, but, um, but maybe they'll have some more time to add some more cool stuff to it, um, and so looking forward to seeing that there. Mass Effect 3, <laughs> if that gets announced, I'll be excited. Arkham Asylum 2, it's like, the first game was so awesome. Um, you know, you give me some new environments and some new Joker, you know, stuff, and it's like I'm set for the second one. But I'm sure they could do more with it, and I'm definitely looking forward to seeing that and playing that. Rage, I haven't seen too much of other than, you know, doom bugging around, so I will definitely be checking <laughs> Rage out. I'm still looking forward to DC Universe. I was a little bit, uh, you know, that game was originally scheduled to come out last year and didn't make it. I've still got my fingers crossed for this. I think they've gone the smart way in the sense that you're playing a created character in the DC Universe. So you'll run into Superman, and you'll run into Wonder Woman, and these icons of the universe. You're not necessarily playing as them, which I think is a smart move, because half the fun in games like this is creating your own character. Ooh, Fallout New Vegas. Spent like close to 100 hours in Fallout 3, and it's the first game I'd done that within a while. So New Vegas is kind of like, do I want? I, I need to know more about it, but it's the danger zone. I don't know, I don't have that kind of spare time. Oh, well, I'm, I'm a total Fallout dork, so I'm New Vegas all the way. I mean, you got the guys from Obsidian who made the original Fallout. 
give them the tools and the new fall. It's like, you know, it's like, you know, chocolate my peanut butter, man. I'm, I'm psyched. And Dead Space 2, really, really psyched about that. They've done a lot of really cool, like, teaser viral stuff out there. Um, they had a contest for people to submit like executions um, for Isaac to perform uh, and I'm just really psyched looking forward to that. Obviously that's going to be like one of my go-to games for the show. I guess the watchword for E3 is to kind of you know expect the unexpected. I mean we obviously know that you know that Sony's going to bring out all their, their stuff and show it off you know and there's, and there's already hints at a new PSP uh, God of War perhaps. There's just some teaser PSP God of War happening. You know they're obviously thrilled with their God of War experiences you know but we always the thing about E3 is that you always see the big three you know Microsoft you know, you know, Sony and Nintendo, they're given. But then, you know, other places like, like E3's having a conference, Ubisoft has having a conference, that new stuff might, might, might pop in that. And then, you know, there's weird stuff like last year when Miyamoto had his little, like, you know, round table. He's like, oh, and by the way, almost casually, oh yeah, Wii Zelda, yeah, we're doing that. You know, people are like, what? Zelda of the Wii, like, hello? It's like, I know a lot of people were kind of let down with Twilight Princess. I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens when they build a game, for, the Zelda game, for the Wii from the ground up. It's not just a GameCube port like Twilight Princess was. And, you know, maybe we'll see kind of a new direction, hopefully. One game that I'm totally looking forward to based on the, the stuff that we've seen just recently for the first time, Test Drive Unlimited. I'm totally looking forward to this game. It's probably, it's quickly become like my most, maybe except for Gears, my most anticipated game of this year. The original game came out a few years ago, I think 2007, and it was an open world MMO racing game on uh, Xbox 360. This, the new one's coming out, you can race on Hawaii's island of Oahu and Ibiza. So two huge islands to explore, you can race off-road. Just it sounds like they're doing a lot of stuff with the community side of things in terms of like social networking and all that stuff, and you'll be able to create car clubs and keep everyone together when they're racing around on the island. It's one of my most underrated games of this console generation, and I cannot wait for Test Drive Unlimited 2. It's going to be awesome. Castlevania Lords of Shadow, I'm really interested in seeing how that turns out. It's a drastic departure from the Castlevania games we've seen. Obviously, um, the DS, the 2D games are, you know, they're kind of Metroidvania style. Previous 3D Castlevania has not been that successful, but this new one, um, it's looking more like a God of War type game, which I think could work really, really well for the Castlevania franchise. So I'm looking, looking forward to that one. So it's always tricky when I talk about the coverage that we do at E3 because I don't want to sound cocky. I'm all about being humble. But now that I got that disclaimer out of the way, nobody covers E3 like we do, period. Well, I love meeting all the developers. I love seeing all the games. But I really love the idea of being a conduit for people to get the questions that they want answered, answered. This year you're going to see us try some new takes on the live show. Uh, some new live experiences at different times, kind of around E3, that, that could get interesting for our folks at home that can't make it. So we'll be living it up, and uh, yeah, E3 2010, I'm pretty stoked. It'll be hard to top what we did last year, but we always say that every year, and we always do. 